Well, it is, it is good that the country is not in a major conflict, uh, that uh, security uh, has uh, returned in an overall way. But uh, we must also make sure that the country sees permanent peace and permanent security. And that is possible only when all the Afghan people join hands. And when all the Afghan people find themselves represented in their government. And when the government of Afghanistan is seen by all the Afghan people as belonging to them, as representing them. And that the country walks towards a better future by giving opportunity and employment to the educated Afghans, both men and women. And in this regard, the most important and pressing issue today for Afghans is the return of Afghan girls to school from grade 6 to 12. These are the vitally important issues for the Afghan people for a peaceful and prosperous future. To put it in few words, a government that is seen by all the Afghan people as representing them, and a country that has its men and women working together, shoulder to shoulder, and especially the Afghan girls going back to school. That is what we want. It is important for Afghanistan to build normal relations with the countries of the world. Uh, we are a member of the international community. We cannot live separate from them. We have to live with them for our own well-being and prosperity. Therefore, um, Afghanistan's interaction with the international community, with our, with our fellow Muslim countries, uh, with Arab countries, um, is, is, is extremely important. For that, we need to take steps uh, to move us in the right direction. As I said earlier in a different context, we must provide all the necessary conditions that will lead to such a relationship, which is an Afghanistan that, that the rest of the world sees as, uh, as a, uh, a country that, that they can work with, and a country that is not a challenge to anyone, but that is uh, an opportunity for, for uh, the rest of the world, a country that obeys the laws of the international community, the universal rules uh, of engagement in a country that has its own people backing its government through the expression of the will of its people. Yes, uh, I very strongly believe in that. I wish he had not left um, uh, the country uh, his leaving the country led to the collapse of the state in Afghanistan. Uh, the army disappeared, the police disappeared, the institutions collapsed. And this provided also an opportunity for uh, other governments and countries to deal with us the way they want to deal with us. We lost our national reserves, uh, more than $7 billion. The U.S. took that money away from us. That is Afghan people's property. That was not the property of any government. And we lost uh, hundreds of thousands of educated Afghans. Uh, uh, millions of Afghans uh, fled for, for neighboring countries. Just yesterday, there was an incident uh, at the uh, crossing with, uh, with Pakistan at Torham, where a man committed suicide who jumped in front of a, of, of a, of a lorry, of a truck, because he was not allowed to come back to Afghanistan, having no documents. Uh, such, such unfortunate incidents would have, would have been avoided. The Afghan people would have been staying in their own country and uh, would have continued. And most important of all, the, an arrangement could have been made between the, the then government and uh, the Taliban movement uh, through uh, a lawyer, Jarga, through a meeting of the Afghan people for a sharing of power or for a transfer of power that would have been seen by the rest of the world as having taken place at the will of the Afghan people. So Afghanistan would have not suffered the way it has suffered uh, uh, as a result of that day when the government collapsed, when the president left.
No, I have not seen, uh, seen any harassment. Uh, I have been staying in the same home, in the same house that I was staying b before the arrival of the Taliban. Uh, I, I keep engaged together with uh, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, the uh, head of the Peace Council, uh, with the Taliban leadership. We meet with them, they, they visit us, we talk about issues. Um, I have uh, been able to visit within the city places that I wanted. Yes, I've not been able to make foreign visits on occasions that was necessary. Other than that, uh, I'm, I'm uh, receiving people, I'm making interviews, I'm talking to you right now. Uh, so there is no, there is no such uh, uh, um, restriction or, or difficulty at all. Yes, a commission has been uh, appointed by the interim government of the Taliban to uh, invite those Afghans who have left the country to come back and uh, live in their own country, which is a, which is a good thing, which, which uh, we, we fully support. But I would like this commission to go beyond the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, this, this uh, uh, move to uh, initiate a political contact with all those Afghans who, for what, whatever reason, uh, have uh, chosen to leave the country in or uh, our outside of Afghanistan. So a political process can start that would lead to uh, an Afghanistan that is seen by all its people as uh, being fully their country and a government that is uh, um, seen as representing them. I think that is what we need in order for us to have the surety, the certainty of a, a long-term peace and stability for Afghanistan. And also surely that will lead to an internal uh, uh, legitimization and external recognition. No, I will not go back to power. I have done my time as the president of the country for 14 years. Uh, and as the Constitution of Afghanistan instructed, I, uh, through an election, transfer power to the next president. Uh, I will not return to power in any form or in any way. I will remain a citizen of this country and work for the well-being of Afghanistan as a citizen of this country. This was, this was more a, a meeting of uh, a gathering of uh, uh, the Taliban uh, uh, movement themselves, uh, mostly uh, of, of uh, their own ranks and file, with, with the, some other participants as well. What I have asked for uh, some months ago, uh, uh, what I've been speaking about was a lawyer jarga. This was a meeting of uh, uh, ulama. Ulama are an extremely important part of the country, uh, very well respected in the country um, uh, by, by all the Afghan people. But a lawyer jarga uh, will be a broader arrangement. A lawyer jarga will mean uh, it has a definition of its own, which that is uh, a meeting of the Afghan people, all the Afghan people, the representatives of all the Afghan people men and women from all parts of the country, from all the people of Afghanistan and from all segments of society, the professionals, the tribal elders, the religious ulama, the uh, businesses, men, women, all segments of society. That is the traditional jirga of the Afghan people. And usually such jirgas are the institutions where a major, in which, by the calling of which, major decisions are made, including the affirmation of governments or changes to the constitution or deciding on major national issues. Absolutely, absolutely. I, 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 I have already written a letter together with Dr. Abdullah Abdullah uh, some months ago. Uh, to the uh, interim government, uh, um, uh, the Islamic interim government of the Taliban, uh, requesting the convening of a lawyer jarga uh, and a dialogue before the convening of a lawyer jarga, broad national dialogue that will lead to a lawyer jarga, that will lead to, to the decisions that the country needs so, uh, so um, very much urgently. It is not necessary to share power. What is necessary 
to have the approval uh, of the people and the feeling in the people that they are being represented in the government uh, that, that, that works for them. Uh, that is the whole idea, uh, to uh, bring about a feeling that Afghanistan belongs to all its people and that the government of Afghanistan is representing all its people and that it is moving in a direction where the aspirations of the people are being fulfilled. Uh, one such uh, example, a vital example, is the return of girls to school. Uh, now, these are the issues and these are the decisions that the Afghan people require of the current government to make uh, so that Afghanistan uh, moves ahead with education, so that Afghanistan is enabled to, to stand on its own feet rather than being a country that is in need of the world, rather than being a country from which its people are running away. That has to stop. And that can only stop when all the Afghan people are united and on one platform and behind their government. And the government then takes policies and steps in the direction of progress and self-sufficiency and economic well-being. It is in the interest of the Afghan people uh, to have Afghan women get educated. The entire Muslim world is getting girls educated. Islam emphasizes the education for girls, lays immense emphasis on education and learning. And Afghanistan cannot be an exception. Uh, the Afghan women uh, obey hijab fully among the best in the Western world in this regard. Therefore, there is no reason, there is, cannot be an excuse not allowing girls to go to school. This is, this is an extremely important demand of the Afghan people. We were happy to see yesterday in the declaration that the meeting made, the meeting of ulama, uh, the declaration that they made, there was a reference to modern education and the rights of women. Well, if you are allowing modern education, which was, which was announced yesterday in, in that gathering, and the rights of women, then tomorrow the Afghan girls should be able to go back to school. And that is the decision that we want to have as soon as possible made by the current government. And I should correct myself here. Rather than saying as soon as possible, I must say immediately. Afghan women do wear uh, burqas uh, uh, in, parts, in, parts, uh, in parts of the country, in, 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 every, uh, in cities and places. It is uh, um, uh, something that has uh, uh, been, been seen in, in, in our country for, for, for um, a very, very long time. Uh, what we are asking about is, in, in fact, the Afghan, as I said earlier, the Afghan women are fully uh, obeying the hijab in, in, in many forms. Some wear burqas, some wear a, a big uh, 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 scarf on their heads, others uh, do it in, in, in some other forms. So the Afghan women do a full, full hijab. What we want is not so much a discussion on this, on hijab. This is something that the society is doing anyway. What we are asking about, what the country is asking about, is the return of women back to work. Sahih as half of the society. And that is extremely important, once again, I must emphasize, for the well-being of Afghanistan. Any government that wants to see the country do well must understand that that cannot happen without women working shoulder to shoulder with the men of that society for a better future. Well, uh, uh, my brother, Saudi Arabia, uh, is uh, a country that is seen with tremendous respect in Afghanistan. It's a brotherly country, uh, a country that has been kind to us. During my own time in office, um, uh, the Saudi government, uh, uh, the Khadim Harbain Sharifains uh, uh, of, of Saudi Arabia, uh, who were alive and who have passed away, have been kind and generous to our country. It's a relationship that we value extremely and looking forward to further and further expansion. And we thank the people of Saudi Arabia for their assistance to Afghanistan 
and for thinking about us all the time. Well, extremism is, 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 is there, um, uh, and, and, and the current government also uh, recognizes this. Daesh is an issue uh, right now uh, for Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda was an issue uh, for Afghanistan, probably still is. So we, um, in the Muslim world especially, have to be extremely aware of the dangers that extremism can, 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 can present to the country. Look at, look at only the past uh, five or six months, how many suicide bombs we've had in our mosques. Uh, how many of our people have been killed in the mosques uh, um, and in the streets uh, uh, of the country uh, and on places of, of, of learning. So it is an issue. But it is not an Afghan issue, uh, or I must say it is not an Afghan issue alone at all. Uh, it is an issue that 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 is uh, come to us from outside, from abroad. I spoke to that earlier uh, in, uh, in answer to your earlier question. But it is also an issue that that we, uh, the Muslim world, must address first among ourselves, and also, of course, uh, require uh, policies from the international community, especially the Western countries to be in line with the aspirations of uh, all of us so that no one is using extremism or exporting extremism or using extremism as a tool of policy uh, in pursuit of their interests. Then uh, Afghanistan in the rest of us will be having a, a secure and uh, uh, extremist-free uh, lives. Talks are going on, engagements are there. Uh, we hope that two things will happen at the same time, that there will be an internal mechanism within Afghanistan where all the Afghans will get together and move towards a future where, where uh, we all see uh, 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 to uh, um, having uh, an order in the country that is, that is uh, seen as representative by all Afghans. And at the same time, uh, we see uh, the international community recognizing Afghanistan, whereby the two combined an internal uh, brotherhood and unity and order and representation and external recognition will lead Afghanistan to progress and stability. Both are absolutely necessary, rather imperative for our country to make progress, for our country to do better uh, economically as well. And for our stability as well.